to my channel. Today I'll talk about scaling your web application as the amount of traffic gradually increases. There are two approaches you can take as you scale. One is called horizontal scaling, while the other is called vertical scaling. I'll start off with vertical scaling before gradually moving to horizontal scaling and eventually explaining why you should always choose horizontal over, over vertical as your application becomes bigger and bigger. Let's say you created an awesome web application and you can't wait to share it with the world. To host this application, you copy over your code to a server machine and run the application. The machine you chose can be your personal computer or a remote computer from vendors like AWS, GCP, or DigitalOcean. Now, whenever people visit your website, they get to see your cool application. As your application gets more and more traffic, and it gets more and more popular, your traffic gradually starts to increase. You can see your latency is increasing gradually too. So you had a latency of 10 milliseconds here, and now you have a latency of 30 milliseconds. As it grows more, you'll reach a point where performance suffers greatly. With so many users now, your website's latency is, has gone up to 200 milliseconds. If you want to keep growing, you need to scale your application, otherwise you'll start losing users. So let's start with vertical scaling. The first thought is just to get a bigger and more powerful machine. If you buy a machine with more RAM, faster CPU, and more network interfaces to have higher concurrent connections, you can satisfy this increased demand. However, the problem is getting a bigger, more powerful machine is expensive. It doesn't scale well. Today, you might get a bigger machine to satisfy your demands, but as your application grows more, you will need an even bigger machine, which will be even more expensive. This is known as vertical scaling, because as you're scaling, you're just buying bigger and taller machines to satisfy the demand. The bigger and more powerful the machine, the more expensive it gets. Also, you have a theoretical peak with this approach. You'll reach a point where money cannot buy you a more powerful machine. Scaling this way also comes with risks. Now thousands of your users are being served from this one. Uh, yeah, so now thousands of your users are being served from this one big and powerful machine. The moment something goes wrong in this machine, no users can use it. So you have a single point of failure, which is always a bad thing. Additionally, your application won't have the same demand all the time. There will be periods in the day when very few people use your app, like late at night, and there, there will be periods when tons of people use it. If you scale vertically, you won't have the elasticity to scale according to the demand. Regardless of the demand, you'll always have this one powerful machine, which means more expenses all the time. To summarize, here are the disadvantages of vertical scaling. It's more expensive and it does not scale well. More downtime as you're moving from one machine to a more powerful machine. Single point of failure, so if one machine goes down, your whole website goes down and no elasticity, so you can't scale with demand, which is way more cost-effective. Clearly, vertical scaling is not sustainable, so let's look at the better alternative, known as horizontal scaling. In horizontal scaling, instead of getting one more powerful machine, you get multiple machines running simple commodity hardware. It's much cheaper this way. Whenever you feel like your service cannot handle the traffic, you can just spin up another machine and decrease the overall load. Spinning up these less powerful machines is much more cost efficient. It also means no downtime because your other machines can keep serving requests while your new machines are coming online. There is also no single point of failure because whenever one server goes down, you have multiple others that can serve the request. Most importantly, you get elasticity. That means you don't have to keep all your machines turned on all the time. You can be serving requests with two machines and then let's say there is a sudden spike of traffic. Your system can auto scale and add three to four more machines to serve these requests quicker. Once demand is down, your system can go back to two machines. This saves you tons of money. A common question might be, 
if using multiple machines, how is the traffic divided between these? That's where the first disadvantage of horizontal scaling comes in. So you'll need a load balancer to route the traffic between these different machines. A load balancer is nothing but an ordinary machine with the sole responsibility to distribute traffic between your server machines efficiently. The load balancer takes in the request from the user and forwards the request to one of your backend servers. When distributing traffic, the load balancer makes sure none of the server is overwhelmed. It also knows when a machine is down so it can stop sending user requests to the dev servers. So there you go. That is all there is to know about the fundamentals of horizontal and vertical scaling. Vertical scaling might solve your problem in the short run, but to get true scalability in the most cost-effective manner, you need to do horizontal scaling. If you like the content, please leave a like below and subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.